okay once the uh, basic principles of anterior vitrectomy are understood uh, and now assuming that you know once we have had a posterior capsular tear now and now uh, we are in the process of doing vitrectomy so one of our goals apart from all what was mentioned by dr bharti is to prevent the enlargement of the posterior capsular tear while doing the anterior vitrectomy itself so that it gives an opportunity to place the original lens into the bag now let's try to understand some basic principles by which we can achieve this Trovasavda has beautifully demonstrated Audio, that past one approach for the antivitrectomy greatly reduces the incidence of Trovasavda has beautifully demonstrated that past one approach for the antivitrectomy greatly reduces the incidence of extension of PC tears can we achieve the same goal of prevention of enlargement of the PC tear but through the anterior limbal root itself by doing something differently now how can we achieve this Number one would be to maintain the anti-chamber equilibrium at every step. We already know this. We put in dispersive OVD before removing the irrigation to prevent its shallowing. Number two would be to decrease the infusion pressure as we begin the anterior vitrectomy. We need to reduce the bottle height since the chamber is already filled with dispersive OVD. Any sudden raise in the infusion pressure inside the eye with an open posterior capsule is one of the most common reasons why the posterior capsule tear enlarges during anterior vitrectomy. Number 3 segment the prolapsed vitreous into two parts one segment which is below the level of the posterior capsule and the second one would be above it this is achieved by placing the cutter behind the level of the posterior capsule tear and then initiate cutting with a very high cut rate and low vacuum and low flow rate with the port held sideways and then posteriorly so that the vitreous behind the PC is segmented away from the anteriorly prolapsed part and later on the prolapsed anterior part is taken care by rotating the tip anteriorly by segmenting the vitreous in two different parts will be able to prevent the vitreous from behind the posterior capsule tear migrating anteriorly while removing the anteriorly prolapsed vitreous let us examine these points in the following few cases we have a posterior capsule tear with a vitreous prolapse dispersive ovd is placed tramsun acetate placed time to perform the anterior vitrectomy the first thing to do is to reduce the bottle height the bottle height is decreased to the minimum it is kept at 28 cm the other parameters are standard that is high cut rate which is the highest possible with that machine with the low flow rate and vacuum now since the chamber is already filled with ovd this low bottle height can still work as the vitrectomy is begun vitrector is positioned just below the level of the posterior capsule tear and the port facing sideways first followed by posteriorly the vitreous is segmented from the anteriorly prolapsed vitreous then the port is turned anteriorly and the prolapsed vitreous is then taken care of the bottle height is progressively increased as the chamber is emptied of the ovd and the vitreous so that the chamber equilibrium is not compromised once the vitreous is cleared off the cortex is aspirated and at this stage the pc tear has not enlarged the originally planned intraocular lens is placed into the bag our goal of preventing the posterior capsule tear enlargement could be achieved case number 2 the posterior capsule is broken we can also see an inner ring and this is the ruptured anterior hyoid as the ovd is being placed into the anterior chamber we can see the prolapsed vitreous finding its way towards the side port the edges of the capsular tear are irregular and are at risk of running away during vitrectomy thus increasing the chances of posterior capsular tear enlargement now let's have a step by step approach of managing this case the prolapsed vitreous near the wound is first cut with the vitrector then the cutter is introduced into the anterior chamber which is currently maintained by ovd and the prolapsed vitreous at this point you can note uh, the chamber is filled with ovd i am not introducing my irrigation cannula still the first thing which goes in is the cutter itself it is taken care of all the vitreous which is near the wound the irrigation still has not gone in the first okay. thing to do is to decrease the infusion pressure before beginning with vitrectomy The infusion is started with a bottle height of just 20 cm. The vitrector is placed just below the posterior capsular tear and the port facing sideways first and then posteriorly the cutting is begun which takes care of the vitreous around and behind the PC tear. At the same time the vitreous is segmented and the prolapsed vitreous in the anterior chamber does not have any communication with the vitreous behind the PC. 
The bottle height is gradually increased as and when we notice the fluttering of the antechamber, suggesting any minor compromise in its stability. The prolapse vitreous is then taken care of. The PC tear continues to be of the same size. Before implanting the IOL, the tear is converted into a posterior capsular rexus. The planned single piece lens could be placed into the bag. So, to conclude, we can reduce the incidence of PC tear enlargement during translimbal antivitrectomy by following the three point approach. Number one, maintain the chamber equilibrium at every step. Number two, would be decrease the infusion pressure as the antivitrectomy is begun. We need to remember that in the presence of a PC tear, the antechamber and the vitreous have direct communication. We assist from a high bottle height gets instant access to the vitreous cavity. The sudden gush of fluid will extend the PC tear even before the vitrectomy has begun. And finally, segmenting the vitreous in two parts by placing the cutter behind the posterior capsule tear helps us to cut the vitreous around and behind the PC tear and at the same time losing the communication with the prolapsed anterior vitreous. Dealing then with the anterior prolapse vitreous is not going to enlarge the posterior capsule tear. Thank you. So, How do we prevent enlarge? So, uh, just a couple of points here. Whenever the vitrector is down inside, we are not going to move around like this. It's going to be very stable. It is going to be just sticking on there. Uh, you are not going to move around there. It's going to be very stable there. The only single most important secret is, you know, the pressure difference between the posterior, uh, the chamber which is posterior to the uh, posterior capsule and anterior to the posterior capsule. The pressure differential should not be there at all. So, there should be minimal turbulence. If you can play or if you can understand this part of the fluidics pretty well, then you can minimize the extension of the posterior capsule tear in majority of the situations. So, the, what is a common mistake happens is when you're doing a cortex aspiration or phaco, whatever, the bottle is usually at 90 centimeters. There is a PC tear. You push in OVD. And the first in panic situation, you don't look at it. Directly go in with the same uh, irrigation pressure, which is 90. Whenever there is a communication between the anterior chamber and the vitreous cavity, initially there is no communication. Now, because the anterior is broken, there is a direct communication, the fluid has direct access to go into the deep well. And that is the reason suddenly the chamber deepens and everything goes in. That is the reason why your posterior capsule tear suddenly enlarges. So, before even you start doing your vitrectomy, the PC tear would have enlarged. That is one point. Second would be position your vitrectomy cutter appropriately when start doing the cutting. So, if you are very careful in the way you position the cutter, uh, then you will take care of, you know, you can prevent the extension of the tear. Uh, when do you do, what do you say, the rexus? If the vitreous is already there in the anterior chamber, that time it is difficult to do uh, the uh, rexus and also not advisable because we can induce traction. So, first do a vitrectomy, uh, limited vitrectomy and then do the rexus. Thank you. Dr. Malik Arjun has a question. That was a nice presentation, but see, um, uh, still many people they hesitate to use the trimsula. Okay. So yeah, I think that's a very to, good question. How much to dilute? Yeah, I think the two or three main concerns are one of the common concerns is uh, incidence of steroid-induced glaucoma. Uh, I think we have been using this for many years now. That really has not been a botheration for us. You know, uh, the recommendation is anywhere between one four to one ten. Uh, so one by one, which is one part is trimsula, four part is BSS or 10 parts is BSS. If it is too diluted, you can't really see well. Uh, but in our experience, we haven't found anything which is uh, contraindicating for the use of this thing, like in the form of a raised pressure, which is not manageable. Uh, it has not been. Second concern would be infection. But both of these are, I think, oh, uh, slightly hyped up concerns. If your other parts, like sterilizations are and all okay, shouldn't be a problem. I think at least, you know, you have to use, I preferably use two times. First to identify and second before closing. It's very much easily possible to miss one vitreous strand somewhere. Uh, that's the reason why at before ending, you can just use it. Apart from identifying vitreous, it has a definite role in minimizing the post-op inflammation. Uh, continuing the same question, when there is dispersive OVD and injected triamcinolone, yeah. Uh, will it coat the vitreous? Yeah, I think that's an excellent question. See what happens, what the classical teaching is whenever we break a posterior capsule, before coming out, you put uh, a dispersive OVD. 
and then after that you have to identify you have to put a uh, trypsin acetate so whenever the ovd is there the staining might not be perfect but still it is good enough to identify and strain few uh, strains and there are other indirect evidences like you know the splaying up or widening of the poster capsule that include indicates that you know there is a vitreous which is prolapsed uh, but definitely even in the presence with the ovd itself when you use a trypsin acetate the staining might not be very good but still it works thank you thank you oh. i think we can discuss uh, right on this that is standard answer no so if you don't have any support if uh, uh, if the rexis is intact you can go ahead and put a sulcus there then you have a choice of putting an iris claw lens or a sleeve fixated lens depending upon your choice so that would be this thing so you ha you have to put either of them depending upon your uh, uh, expertise skill and your preference